cars. Even today's modern, ultra-reliable, super-efficient models just can't stay away from garages. Whether you're filling up with petrol, checking the oil, checking the water or the tyres, or even having it serviced, every modern road user is a frequent user of the garage. Over the last 20 years, garages have changed out of all recognition. But it's only really when you go back to a garage from before the war that you notice just how dramatic these changes have been. I'm standing on the forecourt of Jack Tucker Motorworks here at the National Motor Museum at Bewley. This is a recent recreation of a garage from 1939 based on Jack Tucker's garage of Wedmore in Somerset. As you see, it's a very ramshackle affair built on, a, on an old country barn and it's just developed, which is the way garages were in those days. It originally started as a blacksmith. One of the things you'll notice about this forecourt is the different types of petrol pumps all around. The franchised forecourts didn't happen until much later and in fact petrol pumps themselves were quite new. Before that you used to get your petrol from chemists and hardware shops in two gallon cans like we see over here. Here's a good example of one. In fact this is no ordinary petrol can. One of the problems with early cars is they needed lots of oil and in certain cases you could buy them with oil inside. You'll notice all the different, different brands, some that are still here and some aren't, like Shell Mex, National Benzol, still here but different logo now. Esso, of course, still with their original logo, but Redline and Carlos and Pratt's have long since gone. As I said earlier, the garage started life as a blacksmith, um, performing all the usual fu functions of a blacksmith, mending carriages, carts, and of course, horseshoeing and rapidly turned, turned his hand to car maintenance when first veteran cars came along at the turn of the century. Over here we see the Forge, for instance, where probably now, by 1939, it would have fallen into more or less disuse, but it was still here, and occasionally you'd, you'd make the odd horseshoe for someone in the village. The, obviously, horse-drawn vehicles was, were still used for, for various trades, milk floats, etc., so it wouldn't have fallen totally out of use. Another thing that garages experienced at that, at that time was the difficulty in getting spare parts. So a lot of the parts would actually be made here, hence the, the, uh, the presence of the lathe and the various metal working tools over here. As you see, all different types of tools and even authentic cobwebs. Of course, in 1939, political correctness hadn't even been invented, and even now we have uh, pin-ups in garages, but in 1939, there would have been a nice selection of smutty postcards. Before the war, there were no such thing as quick fit tyre bays or exhaust specialists. Your local garage would do everything. And here we see a good example. We've already looked at the blacksmith, and here we have tyre vulcanisation, repairing of tyres, even selling new ones occasionally. And if you look at some of these tyres, these really are early tyres with metal studs and all sorts of weird tread patterns, anything just to try and get grip. By the 1930s, you wouldn't see many of these tyres. These are obviously very old stock. Of course, one of the things you'd expect a garage to do, and this one's no exception, is repair cars. Here we have a, a mid-1920s Calcot in for repair. Cars in those days needed repairing much more often. They used to need constant decokes. The older viewers will probably remember doing that sort of thing, although I'm pleased to say I don't. Um, and I, I, I imagine that that's one of the things that this car's come in for now. One of the functions of a garage that, that is now long since forgotten would be the recharging of radio batteries. Batteries at that time 
would last up to a week and then would need recharging and most houses wouldn't have a recharger so you'd bring it to a garage and have it recharged here. In fact if the battery level was low they could even top it up with acid from the vat they have here. Of course not everyone in the village would be able to afford a car at this time and the less well-off would, would remain cycling so the enterprising Mr Tucker made sure he was able to cater for those people too with his own built-on cycle shop. Among the services offered by Mr Tucker would be the sale of new cycles, repair of cycles, he'd be able to supply all the bits you need from mudguard stays, mudguards, backlights, saddles, tyres, you name it. He'd sell you a second-hand bike, wheels or whatever. As business improved, the enterprising proprietor would take to selling second-hand cars, and here we have a selection. Very reasonably priced, don't you think? On sale here we have a Wolseley, a Bean, and a three-wheel Jap-engined Morgan. Of course, not all cars that, that turned up at the garage were saleable, and those that weren't fell into disrepair and eventually were scrapped like this 1905 Gregoire, along with bits of bike and bedstead and all the rubbish that you'd expect to find at the back of any garage at that time. Round the back of the garage you'd find even more rubbish, just piled high. Along with the, the nice old signs, you'd find more of these, these old petrol cans just, just littered around, and also you'd find wrecked cars. Here's a, a bullnose Morris that's just been brought in on the back of the wrecker. Very sad, a complete write-off, bound to join the scrap heap. So you've had your car mended, you've had your lawnmower serviced, your motorcycle's had a new engine fitted, you've had your radio batteries charged, or you've repaired your bike, then comes the difficult bit. Then you've got to part with cash. So here we are in the office. Not much of an office, very ramshackle and dirty, just like everything else in the entire garage, but that's the way it was. No one complained because that's the way it always had been. So, while you're digging out your wallet, blow blowing off the cobwebs and, and sorting out the bill, why not treat yourself to a bar of chocolate, just like we still do today. So there it is then, the garage from the 1930s. 
a hive of enterprise. As you'd expect, I've saved the best bit till last. Look what I've found for hire for 30 shillings, £1.50 a day. So if you'll excuse me, I'm off to see some genuine pre-war New Forest scenery. <laughs>